Hi everyone and welcome back to Revised Chemistry with Mr B. If you're finding the videos useful, please remember to like and subscribe. So in this video we're going to be looking at the difference between pure substances and mixtures. Make sure you stay around for the practical because I'm going to be showing you how to use this piece of equipment to determine whether something is a pure substance or a mixture. So what is a pure substance? Well, in chemistry, a pure substance is only made from one element or one compound. So in other words, it's a single substance. So when we go to the supermarket and we see bottles of orange juice that say pure orange juice, the supermarket means they haven't added anything extra, like no extra sugar or no extra preservatives. But it doesn't pass the chemistry definition for pure. So in chemistry terms, we'd say it's not pure because in the orange juice, there might be water, there might be vitamins, there might be natural sugars. So it's not made from one element or compound. So it isn't pure in chemistry terms. And if we think about bottled water, a lot of people think bottled water is pure, but guess what? That's not pure either, because you've only got to look on the uh, label on the back of a bottle of water and it will have lots of things in there such as sodium, magnesium, maybe some carbonate ions. So it's definitely not made from one element or one compound. So what would class as a pure substance in chemistry terms? Well, if we have a balloon of helium that only contains helium and nothing else. So that's made of just one element. If we have just salt on its own it's just made from sodium chloride so in that case it's just made from one compound so mixtures are made from two or more substances that are not chemically joined together so an example would be air because air is made from different gases like nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide and a little bit of argon and they're not joined together another example would be cola because that's made from things like water, sweeteners, flavorings, citric acid, and probably some other things in there as well. So once again, that's not just made from one element or one compound, it's made from several things that aren't joined together. So how do you tell if a substance is pure or a mixture? Well, a pure substance has a specific boiling point and melting point. For example, ice made from pure water melts at exactly zero degrees C whereas pure water boils at exactly 100 degrees C. Mixtures, on the other hand, melt and boil over a range of temperatures. For example, seawater may boil between 102 and 106 degrees. So you can see there's a range there where it's boiling. Now, I'm going to show you next how to use a piece of equipment that is specifically designed for finding out the melting point of a substance and then that can help us decide whether a substance is pure or a mixture. So let me show you what we've got inside this special test tube. So this test tube is called a field tube and it's got a side arm on it here and we've got water in the tube. Now this is our sample of the substance that we're going to have a look at to see if it's a pure substance or a mixture. So we're going to be trying to work out its melting point to see if it melts at a sharp melting point or if it melts over a range of temperatures. So we've got a small sample of the substance in this ignition tube and that's just fastened to the um, thermometer with an elastic band. So we can end up with the ignition tube in the main body of the water. So I'll pop that back in there and then I'm going to just heat up very gently the side arm and the idea is we'll set up a convection current going around like this and that will gently warm the main tube of water so it's gradually warming up the sample in the ignition tube and I'm doing it very gently so that we don't go shooting past the melting point we'll be able to see either the exact temperature that it melts at or the range of temperatures. So we'll come back in a few minutes time. So we can see it's just beginning to melt now. It's, most of it is melted, there's still a little bit of solid in there. So once again, I'm just moving the Bunsen burner in and out of that side arm. So we've got really gentle heating and now it's completely melted. So at this point, I'll read off the melting point of the thermometer. 
One last thing you need to know is the effect of adding impurities to a pure substance. So the first thing is adding an impurity to a pure substance lowers its melting point. So this is the reason why salt is put on roads in winter to lower the melting point of the ice. This means that ice might melt at minus three degrees, for example, rather than zero degrees. So it starts to melt much earlier in the day before the temperatures warmed up too much. Adding an impurity also raises the boiling point of a substance. So if you're doing some cooking and you add salt to a pan of boiling water, it means it will boil at a higher temperature, so the food will cook quicker. If it was pure water, it would boil at 100 degrees, but by adding salt to the water, it may boil, for example, at 105 degrees. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. Thank you for watching.